A few days after his accident at Lower Suttery, Sheffield was shunting in the yard at Wellsworth. Although he was still worried about his friends, Rowan and Maxwell, he made sure to focus on his work. Letting his worries distract him had already caused one accident. It would not cause another. Did you hear that, driver? Yes, it sounds familiar. Rowan, what are you doing here? Pulling trains on this Brendan branch line, obviously. So you're the Rowan I've heard about then? He is indeed. Rowan, this is my brake van, Brian. Pleased to meet you. Are you feeling a bit down, Sheffield? Well, I was worried about both of you. Yes, even Maxwell. You're looking a bit blue, too. <laughs> you haven't changed, have you? No. But I can't say the same about you. You've got a geasel ejector now, too. Yes. I asked about one a while ago. Peter Sam swears by his. I had it installed after that little accident at Laura Suddery. Seemed like a good time. Bit more too than that. Miss Hat's got the sufficiency bee in her bonnet at the moment. Just look at Gordon's new funnel. I will, when I meet him. Anyway, this new look suits you. Thanks. So they sold you this time, then? I'll take it Maxwell's just running things on his own now. Not exactly. Our heritage railway's shut down, Sheffield. What? But what about Maxwell? He's gone to another heritage railway, west of London. Miss Hat arranged that. That is a relief. Now I presume you have to take over for me here? Indeed. Can you give me a rundown? Of course, Sheffield replied. He quickly filled his old friend in on the work required. Once that was done, Sheffield left and Rowan collected his trucks. He made good time down the branch line, but despite his happy reunion with Sheffield, he couldn't help feeling uneasy. Where his body and tenders joined, Rowan had flexible pipes to carry steam to his cylinders. These wore out easily and tended to develop small leaks. He could feel several such leaks now, this wasn't that surprising. Even before that final safety incident, his heritage railway had been running on a shoestring. However, he made it to Brendan without any trouble. Ah, good morning. You must be Rowan. We've been expecting you. A Metrovic? You must be Boko. Pardon my saying so, but I thought you'd look a little different. Huh. <laughs> You've been watching that TV show about us, haven't you? Yes, we had them playing at the stations on my old line, to entertain the waiting passengers. Those moral makers did a good job of recreating us, with what resources they had. But all the same, you shouldn't believe everything you see on television. Indeed. Sheffield said I need to collect some China clay trucks. I understand there are two tank engines at the quarry. Bill and Ben, yes. We want to keep an eye out for them. I understand they can be maddening. That's the word. I'm due to take a passenger run, but it was nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you too. After shunting his trucks, Rowan headed for the China Clay Quarry. He looked around as he entered. It was a bit larger than the one he'd worked in Cornwall, and the layout of the tracks was unfamiliar. He stopped next to a hut by the entrance and whistled. A workman joined him a moment later. Hello, you that new engine? A snarky reply came to Rowan, but this was no time for jokes. That's right. I imagine my crew and I will need a safety briefing. Indeed. Jerry's waiting for you over the office for that. I take it that's not this building here, then? No, it's the explosive store. That's why it's all the way over here. Thank you, Rowan replied, and he headed off. He stopped outside the office and whistled to let this Jerry know he was there. He didn't see two yellow tank engines standing on a nearby siding, but they saw him. Looks like we've got a new visitor, Ben. Don't think I've seen an engine like him before. Neither have I. Do you think he knows we're twins? There's one way to find out. 
Driver, do you have a screwdriver? <sighs> You're thinking of doing that prank again, aren't you? Come on, we haven't had a chance like this in years. After a few moments, the twins' crews had removed their nameplates and numbers. Both twins moved off to give this newcomer a proper Brendan welcome. Bill stayed behind on the track leading to the sidings. Ben crossed over to the track which ran on the other side of where Rowan was sitting. While this had been going on, Jerry had been giving his safety briefing. So just follow those rules and you'll not have any problems. Do you have any questions? Would you have any spare coal? I've had a bit of a long run. Of course. There's some staths over by Shed 2 and a coal dock just over there. Rowan looked over. There was indeed a well-stocked coal dock on the other track. Thanks for the briefing, Jerry. It was very thorough. Now, where can I find the trucks Sheffield mentioned? They're in the sidings over by the diggings. Thanks. With that, Rowan departed. He watched behind him as he went. Hello, you... He's gone? He has indeed. Seems the throne's quite the worker. Bill? What happened? Ho 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 He didn't see you two. That's what happened. Your timing's off. I'm not too sure about that. We've done this before, remember? With Boko and Peter. It worked both those times. Yes, I remember. Rowan must just be ignoring us. That's a bit rude. We'll have to see about that. While this had been going on, Rowan had been taking on coal. With that done, he used the Y to turn for his return run. He quickly arranged the trucks he needed to take back. Unbeknownst to him, he had an audience. Look at that! He's just taking our trucks! What does he think he's doing? Surely Edward or Boko would have told him to check with us first. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Ben? I think so, Bill. Right, here's what we'll do. Bill said, and he started whispering to his twin. Meanwhile, Rowan had pulled the second cut of trucks. Most of them had already been organised into blocks. He knew who should be thanked for that. Is that the lot? Most of them. If you pull them just beyond that footbridge, we'll add the last ones. Would it be Bill and Ben doing that? I've not seen them about. Really? They must be up to their tricks again. Hide and seek, is it? Let them know they've won, then. Right, I. With that, Rowan moved his train into position. Now that they'd played their welcoming prank, perhaps he would meet the twin tank engines properly on his next visit. Meanwhile, Bill and Ben had arranged the last of the trucks for Rowan's train. They pushed them up to the rest of it, and the trucks were coupled up. Then they called for the guard. This looks like a bit of a big train. We'd better give what's-his-name up there some help starting. Righto, then. With that, the train moved off. At first, the twins helped out, pushing carefully so they didn't crush the brake van. As they passed through Brendam, the twins breathed a sigh of relief. Neither Edward nor Boko were there, so they didn't get spotted. Heading out from Brendan, the twins decided to make their move. With a whisper to their drivers, they had their regulators shut off. For a few moments they coasted, their inertia propelling them forward. Then that ran out, and their weight began to drag on the train. Let's see if he can ignore us now, Bill whispered, and they both chuckled. Rowan noticed the extra weight. Could you please open up the regulator a bit, driver? Seems these trucks really are troublesome. Rowan's driver obliged, and the Garrett engine pulled forward. These trucks had to meet Bear on the main line, and couldn't be late. But that hissing from his steam pipes grew worse and worse. Despite this, Rowan pressed on with his train. As he approached a signal box, he spotted the signal man waving a yellow flag. He slowed down. As he passed the signal box, the signal man threw something to Rowan's driver, then went back upstairs. What was that? A note. 
Seems Boko has been delayed at Lower Suttery. His guard's been taken ill, and he's waiting for the relief guard. We're to pass him on the other track, then cross back over. Righto. We'd better get back up to speed then. Rowan pulled forward, but his wheels slipped slightly. He'd used up a bit of coal and water. With less weight in his tenders, he didn't have as much grip on the rails. So, he had to work a little harder. That was a close one, Bill. You can say that again. I've just thought of something. When do we get uncoupled from this train? At Wellsworth, I guess. There'll probably be some trucks we can take back down to the quarry. Ahead, at Lower Suttery, some of Boko's passengers had gotten out to stretch their legs. Boko eyed them, slightly concerned. Driver, shouldn't we ask the passengers to get aboard? That replacement guard's due in a minute. We've still got to wait for Ron to pass. That won't be too long. I think I can hear him now. Boko looked back as the beat of a hard-working steam engine filled the air. Moving slowly, an exhausted Rowan dragged his train through the station. Steam hissed from his pipes. Oh. I hope he's alright. It sounded like he was leaking steam. I'll help him if... Uh... Hello, Boko. Nice day, isn't it? Uh, y yes. I, um, I, I, I suppose it is. What are those two doing here? Uh, hold on. Driver, is it just me, or do you only hear one steam engine? Yes, but I can see three. So do I, driver. No wonder poor Rome was struggling. Bill and Ben do like their pranks, but this one has gone too far. Driver, could you send word to Wellsworth? Doing it now. Edward should be up there, and forewarned is forearmed. A little while later, Bear had stopped at Wellsworth to pick up some trucks for his slow goods. Normally, there were about half a dozen or so, but today, there were hardly any. Is that all there is today? I'm afraid so. The train from the quarry hasn't arrived yet. Shouldn't it be here by now? It's not like Boko or Sheffield to be late. It's not either of them. There's a new engine working on our line. Still settling in, is he? I understand. Bear replied. A few minutes later, the shunting was complete, and Bear departed. As the diesel picked up speed, he passed Rowan's train coming off the branch line. He only gave it a passing glance, and was well past by the time Bill and Ben were dragged out onto the main line. Rowan reached Wellsworth. He breathed a sigh of relief. His wheels ached, and his steam pipes hissed. But he'd made it. However, the engine waiting did not look happy to see him. It was the same engine he'd passed on his way down earlier. With that number, you must be Edward. Sorry for being a little late. These trucks do hold an engine back, you know. I do know, Rowan. In fact, I think you did an excellent job getting them here. Considering that you were pulling that heavy train and two idling tank engines... We're not idle, we're trying to make a point! Shush, Ben! We're trying to remain discreet! Whoops. Who said that? Bill and Ben, I think you should come forward. Bill and Ben, I presume. You're much smaller than I expected. Are you too fresh picked or something? <laughs> That's a good one. We've been working around here for years. But Edward, how did you know we weren't helping? Boko saw three engines, and only heard Rowan. I told you he'd noticed, Bill. All right, all right. So what's the meaning of this, then? Were you trying to make me look bad? You managed to do that yourself. Excuse me? He just came in and took our trucks, Edward. You know better than that, and so does Boko. I was looking out for the two of you, but as I said, I was expecting you to be bigger. You know, like in that TV show with the model trains. Oh yes, they did have to make us bigger on that. Something about the mechanisms. Now, you're not wearing your nameplates. You must have been hiding behind the trucks. I'm no diseasel, but I can tell what you were trying to pull. Can't you two just say hello like any other engine? 
I'm sure they didn't mean any harm, Rowan. True, but I must say I'm not impressed. I was prepared to give you two the benefit of the doubt. After all, you can't believe everything you see on TV. But what I've seen is that you're a pair of jokers who don't take their work seriously. That's not true! We do take our work seriously! Really? Then who's doing your work down at the quarry while you're up here? It can't be Boko. He's bringing that passenger train up. Uh, uh, um... Well, then, perhaps you should head back. I'm sure your manager's missing you. There are some trucks here you can take with you. That's a good idea, Edward. The twins quickly shunted their trucks and departed. Once they had gone, Edward looked over at Rowan. They are good engines, Rowan. I find that hard to believe. Now, I do like a joke as much as the next engine, but I never joke about my work. Neither do they, usually. Rowan looked closely at the blue engine. If half of what he'd heard about Edward was true, then this engine was truly worthy of respect. I'll keep that in mind then. First impressions aren't everything, after all. I mean, look at Sheffield. He turned out alright. Now did any of these trucks on my train miss their connection? Some were supposed to be on Bear's slow goods. He's just left. Have I time to take them down? Yes, I can cover your next train. They'll need to be delivered to the main harbour at Napford. Thank you. Are you alright? I'm afraid not. That was my front steam pipe. I'm not going to be able to move. Edward buffered up to Rowan and shunted him off the main line. Henry's due through soon. He's running light to the works. I don't think you'll mind giving you a lift. Thanks. Sorry about this. Don't you worry about it. They'll be able to sort you out up there. Edward said. He left Rowan in the banker siding and went to sort out the trucks. A large green engine soon arrived. The station master flagged him down. Then he explained the situation and performed the introductions. Henry quickly backed down in front of Rowan. It's nice to meet you, Henry. Sorry about the imposition. It's no bother. Miss Hatz ordered me to the works to have my tender seen to. Is it damaged? No, she's just got a tender upgrade project going. We're all getting fowler style ones. They carry more water. Oh. If I may ask, what happened to you? The station master said it was a steam pipe failing. It's the joints between my boiler and tenders. They have to flex to go around corners. Eventually the rubber seals go old and wear out. I understand it. it's a design flaw. You could put it like that, Rowan replied. Both engines fell silent then. Rowan couldn't help worrying. He'd only just been talking to Bill and Ben about their first impression. Now he had to worry about his own. Late with the train, and now this breakdown. He'd have to see what Miss Hat would say.